Hi, it's Kevin Baxter with Daytona Twin Tech, back again with another tech tip. Uh, as I'd said in our last video, we're, we're working into a series on installation and tuning of the TCFI systems from Daytona Twin Tech. Uh, in the first video, we covered uh, the differences between Alpha N, uh, 100 kPa speed density, and 300 kPa speed density. And uh, you would need to know how to uh, calculate your injector pulse width in order to use the Twin Tech speed density system. So that's what we're going to cover. Uh, both of these spreadsheets are available for download from the Twintech website, and uh, you'll notice as we proceed that there are two different spreadsheets, uh, the 100 kPa for that system and then the 300 kPa uh, for boosted applications, which takes a couple other numbers into account. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we need to know, of course, is our engine horsepower rating. Now, this is a crankshaft horsepower, so uh, not rear wheel. So you would uh, anticipate or estimate uh, about a 15% parasitic loss through the drivetrain. And uh, so whatever you expect your rear wheel horsepower to be, you would want to reduce that, um, uh, excuse me, increase that by about uh, 15%. So in this case, I've entered 115 horsepower in, um, anticipating a parasitic loss. Uh, so this would effectively be a, uh, an estimated 100, uh, 100 horsepower engine at the rear wheel. Uh, the next thing we would enter in would be uh, the maximum um, RPM rating, and then also target lambda. Now this number can vary based on um, uh, based on the type of fuel that you're running, ethanol, non-ethanol, etc. And so um, you can drop over here, and if you expect to, to your richest setting would be around 13.2 then you'll notice that that's a 0.9 lambda and it changes that for us. But I would recommend being a little conservative. Uh, use a value of somewhere around 12.5 or 12.8. Uh, the next thing would be your brake specific fuel consumption. Uh, do not modify that number for unboosted applications. A normally aspirated engine is a, a 0.45 BSFC, which uh, is um, an estimation for how efficiently the engine can handle incoming fuel. So a normally aspirated engine would be 0.45, uh, if, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that when we get to the 300 uh, kPa sheet for boosted applications. All right, the next thing is uh, your injector flow rating. Notice that's in pounds per hour. So let's say, for example, we drop over here, we're going to use a 3.91 gram per second injector. Uh, the conversion would be done, and that's 31 pounds per hour. Of course, we have two injectors. Uh, Harley-Davidson's operated at 58 PSI, and uh, that's going to give us a maximum fuel requirement of 55 pounds per hour. Uh, we would have 50 pounds per hour available at 80% duty cycle, and that base injector pulse width would be 14.8. Now, one thing to point out, notice your expected duty cycle is 88%. We want to try to keep that value at somewhere around 80%. So the, the way to do that would be to increase the injector size. So we'll pop back over here and we'll do 4.35 uh, grams per second. Uh, see there, we're pretty close to, we're at 79%. So what this is telling us is that uh, an engine making that much crankshaft horsepower should have an injector in it of around 4.35 grams per second, um, which would get your, again, your duty cycle down to right at 80%. And the base injector pulse width number that you see here at 13.3 is the value you would enter into the setup parameters uh, for your initial map in the TCFI. When we get to boosted applications, things change a little bit. Um, we're going to have the very similar numbers. We're also, uh, let's do some initial setup. Uh, first off, let's say we expect around 160 crankshaft, crankshaft horsepower, uh, 6200 maximum RPM. Uh, we would enter in our maximum boost pressure. Now, it's important to point out that this is absolute pressure. So normal atmospheric pressures, approximately 14.69. You would add that to how many pounds of boost you expect to see out of your system. So in this case, if we plan on making around five pounds of boost, we would add the two together and estimate that at 20. Uh, next thing is your target lambda. Uh, boosted engines, you typically want to run them a little bit richer at wide open throttle. So I've entered in a value of 12.5 uh, to get 0.85 lambda, which transferred here. The brake specific fuel consumption. Now this would be for a, uh, for example, a supercharger like a pro charger. All right. Um, you would use a BSFC estimated around 0.55. 
Um, if you were dealing with a turbo, you would want to put a value in here of 0.6 to 0.65. All right, so superchargers, uh, 0.55, turbos, 0 0.6, 0 0.65, and for normally aspirated, uh, which we covered on the previous sheet, uh, would be 0.45. Okay, of course, we're going to run two injectors. Again, uh, system rated pressure, actual system pressure at 58 PSI. And um, we come down here and we notice that we've got an 80% duty cycle with a uh, base injector pulse width of 29. Now the injector size that we've entered in here, uh, we've entered in a 7.5 gram per second injector. All right, now uh, that produced a, um, an 80% duty cycle. That would be the, uh, the base injector pulse width, the 29 would be the value entered in when you're setting up your base map. Now, where, where it could possibly change is if you were using, which we do recommend, uh, using a, a fuel pressure regulator that references manifold pressure. So if you were using, for example, a one-to-one -one, uh, FMU, rising rate fuel pressure regulator, then, um, and, and say you were making approximately 10 pounds of boost, that would increase your system pressure by approximately 10 pounds. So you would put in a value of 68 there as the actual system pressure. All right. Notice that that dropped your expected duty cycle at maximum down to 74%. Now because of that, you could actually reduce your injector size and play with this number a little bit. Uh, so by, you know, we could use an injector size of around 7 grams per second. That's going to give us an 80% duty cycle and then a base injector pulse width of 28.7. So these are all the numbers that you would want to take into consideration for boosted applications. Okay, this has got us off and running pretty well. Um, on the next video coming up here in a couple of weeks, uh, we're going to go through the procedure of creating our own base maps uh, that would be loaded into the TCFI. And uh, once you create the base map, the next video would be uh, the installation, uh, loading the map into the bike, and then starting the tuning procedures, and then we'll go from there. Uh, once again, folks, we greatly appreciate you watching and uh, be sure to like the video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't already so you can stay up to date on these tech tips and we'll see you next time. Ride safe.